All right, good morning everybody. It's early Sunday morning. We got done with the rain and everything and I'm gonna do uh, a little bit of shooting this morning. Not a whole lot, but uh, just uh, a little show and tell type thing. And uh, we're gonna do it with three different uh, rifles. Pellet rifles, air rifles. Uh, and I'll go through them real quick here and show you what, what I got and what we'll be shooting with. Uh, plus we'll be testing the uh, pellet trap so uh, I want to hit that with a 25 uh, straight on. I don't want it uh, uh, behind the, uh, the target or behind the, uh, the wood or have a towel in it so I want to see what damage is actually going to be caused uh, once everything gets eaten away and it starts hitting the metal. That way if I have to reinforce that I will reinforce it. I've got some uh, old oil cans or grease cans that uh, you know mechanic shops get uh, filled with grease they're like 30 gallon I think I can cut one of them up and uh, start layering metal if I have to we're gonna see we're gonna find out we know what the 22 will do I showed that in the last video it dinged it pretty good I'm not worried about the 177 whatsoever uh, 25 has got me a little worried <laughs> as to what it'll eat away so anyway um, here we go. Um, these are the three that I've got at the present moment. This one down here is a uh, Crossman 177 uh, caliber. It's a 1077 series. It's semi-automatic and uh, it, uh, it's a good planker. You know, I wouldn't consider it a toy. Uh, I wouldn't give this to a kid unless they you know have adult supervision or uh, yeah they would need adult supervision it can still do a lot of damage uh, especially in the you know uh, 10 to 20 foot range it'll it'll still pretty you know it'll, it'll put a hurting on somebody so uh, even though I consider it kind of a toy because it feels like a toy compared to a real rifle or any of the bigger uh, pellet guns I have uh, what I shoot in that is these uh, Benjamin uh, hollow points, and these are a uh, 7.9 grain. Uh, they're pretty heavy, and then these uh, Crossman Premiers, which are uh, you know the pointed tip, and that's 7.4. Uh, these CO2 rifles they like to do a little bit better with uh, with a lighter weight pellet. Um, especially when you run out of CO2, but they do pretty good with a the heavy. Then second up is the uh, Hatson Edge, and that's a 22 caliber. Uh, oh, I should mention this has a 39 by 32 scope. Uh, the Hatson has a four, a fixed four by 32 AO scope, uh, which is great for uh, the the distances that I'm shooting at and everything and again it's a brake barrel rifle um, I shoot mainly the crow magnums for some reason these Hatsons like the heavier uh, crow magnum they do uh, very accurate with that uh, these crossmen are a lot cheaper they're a uh, little less grain too uh, they they do okay but they're not uh, real accurate. You know, you get a lot more flyers with these. The uh, Crow Magnum's an 18.21 grain, and the Premier uh, Crossman's are 14.3. So, uh, onward and upward, we go to the um, the 25, which is on top, and that has 39 by 32 scope. Uh, actually, that came with a rifle, and it's not a bad scope. I mean, it's it's pretty good. Now, uh, this one is also a brake breech. It's spring. Both of these Hatsons are spring rifles. They're not the nitro. Uh, one of these days I'll get a nitro just to you know, be able to leave a, a weapon loaded and cocked if I need it for, for an hour or two. With these, you don't really want to leave them uh, cocked. It'll ruin the spring. So uh, I just got these pellets. Uh, I've already shot it in. I've zeroed in the scope uh, fairly well. Uh, it could use a little bit more work, but uh, it's good enough for right now. 
and I got the Cro Magnums, and these are uh, 26.23 grains that I'm shooting in that, and that's quite, uh, as you can tell, uh, that's quite a load. If you compare them to the uh, 177, which uh, there, there's your uh, your difference in the calibers. And of course, uh, we can go with a 22, and the 22 is there. So you can see there's uh, quite quite the difference in size, also power and impact. So I'm going to go set up now. Uh, I'm going to get my pellet trap out there, and. Uh, I'm going to do the 25 first to see what damage it does to it and then uh, mount the pellet trap and uh, we'll go ahead and fire all these just uh, just a few times just for the fun of it. So I'll cut it off here and I'll get uh, everything set up. I'll put the uh, GoPro camera on the tripod. Uh, it has a wider angle than the Sony cam does and uh, maybe it'll do a little bit better uh, filming the shooting. So. Uh, We'll see, we'll see how it goes. Okie dokie. So we're all set up. The can is over there. Downrange, if you can see it on there. Hell of a gun to cock. These are hollow points as well. Take the safety off and here we go. We will do the first shot into the pellet trap. It's a loud, loud rifle. Although it probably won't show up on... Uh, I think it's holding up pretty good so far. I'm just going to put three into it and see what it did. Alrighty. Let's go take a look. I think uh, I think we got it dicked here. These uh, one, two, three, four, five were the 22 from the other day, and these three here are from the 25 that I just shot. Put some pretty good dents on on the other side, but it certainly isn't tearing it up. Now, if I keep shooting at the same area, I, I'm sure eventually it'll tear it up. And this one here was actually, it caught right on the edge over here, so that's probably this one. These other two were direct hits, and it caught pretty much all the pellet material. And uh, I'm, I'm really happy with that, so if I put a little towel in here or something like that to uh, keep the noise down, I think it'll work fine. So anyway, I feel uh, I don't need to do any more reinforcement for now, maybe later on as I wear away at it. Uh, I might have to do some, but for now, this is uh, pretty pretty tough with a 25. So uh, I'm going to mount this on the target and we'll go and we'll knock some wood out of the way. All right, target is set up before anybody has a conniption fit. Um, I'm not shooting at a neighbor's house here. Uh, this place has been abandoned for over 18 years. I do know the owner of the property. Uh, it's just an old mobile home that's uh, crumbling. 
although I'm not hitting it, uh, my shot isn't that bad. <laughs> and uh, usually I'm, I'm aiming towards the ground a little bit more. Now I won't be with this, but uh, I have yet to miss the board and uh, uh, it really doesn't matter. So uh, nobody lives there, there's no people there, there's no damage to be done, uh, not to worry. Uh, okay, so the 177 we're doing first, and this is a semi-automatic, like I said, and this has a little magazine in it with 12 shots. So, uh, I've had the CO2 cartridge in this thing for a little bit, maybe a couple weeks, and uh, I took a rat out of its misery here uh, and put a new cartridge in that day. So, uh, I'll probably just empty these out real quick to show you that... Uh, you know, it's a fun little plinker, and I'll be aiming at the bottom targets, the little ones, the hanging targets, uh, just a just a plank. It's just a, a fun thing. So this just loads like such. Take the safety off, and uh, that's it. I mean, very lightweight gun. Um, So, as you can see, that's a fun little target gun. Uh, it's not going to do a lot of damage. You see, I hit the target, you heard it clink, and uh, you know, knock it around a little bit. And uh, that's, that's a 177. So, it's not a real, real great. It's not a real great item, but uh, it'll do. And this is, a, again, the 22 Hatson. We went over this the other day. But uh, I think I've got a... Yep, i got a pellet in there. I think that's a Pro Magnum. And we can fire this one into the top target. Where to go? Right through the wood? Right into that can. I think these 22s are pretty, that's where the Crow Magnum, I'm going to go with a cross, Crossman hollow points, which are a little bit lighter weight, not quite as accurate. And that one right through to the can too. And we'll do one more with it. I love this 4x32 scope. That is really a wonderful scope. <coughs> and another one. Okay, and that blew right through the wood into the can. We heard them hit. So let's see what the uh, 25 does. And we're back to the, whoops, back to the 25. <coughs> oh. Ooh, boy, that went right through there. back here. And 
that's three out of that. So let us go take a look. By the way, I made this nifty handle out of the top of the Freon can handle. Just cut it off, flatten it out in a vise, put a nut and bolt in there. Gets me to carry this pretty good. So we've got pretty good accuracy. It's early in the morning for me anyway. Shaky. But larger holes are 25. Uh, hard to tell what this is, but yeah, pretty good size holes all the way around. And you can see what it did to the rubber. There's your 25s, which are the three. The rest of them are 22s. So that did a pretty good number on the wood and the inner tube. And let's take the back apart. And uh, should be relatively easy. Let's see what it did to the wood. That's uh, a lot of wood there, but it caught all the pellets, they're all in there, did a nice job, didn't really do a lot more damage on the back, uh, it's, uh, it's denting it pretty good. Oh, oh, oh. Jeez. Okay, that was not funny. And then, uh, of course, there's, uh, there's what it does to the plywood. So, plywood's uh, nice, so if you get a ricochet, in case you do, the pellet trap doesn't catch it, at least the wood, and you're constantly going to be hammering this area because it's the middle of the target, and, uh, you know, if, if you're shooting over here or over here, you need to zero in your, your sights or your scope or quit shaking a lot, <laughs> whichever the case may be. So there it is, gentlemen. There's our little quick uh, uh, deal on the uh, pellet trap, and uh, it works out fine. So, uh, and this is roughly uh, 32 feet, so uh, around 10 meters a little over 10 meters, so I'm at a uh, relatively close range, and uh, that's it. That's the video, people. That's uh, part three, and that's the end of it. Oh yeah, I did forget to mention that uh, this is all toxic masculinity, so uh, don't try this if you don't have any, and uh, long live the patriarchy. Bye.